Ladies and gentlemen, today our guest is one of the most outrageous people on the internet today, a internet scammer and rapper by the name of Punch Made Dev. We go into his life, his background, and much, much more in today's episode. Without further ado, Punch Made Dev. Welcome to another episode of the Tommy G Show. We're here with one of the most notorious uh, scammers of the internet, a rapper that is taking the internet by storm. Just an absolute character. There's a lot to dig into today. But first, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Punch Made Dev. What up, what up, man? So where are we right now? We in Lexington, Kentucky. And this is where you are born and raised? Nah, I was actually born in uh, North Carolina. Okay. And then from there, I moved to Louisville, Kentucky. Then from there, I moved to Hawaii. Then I moved to Houston. Then I moved to Lexington again. And now... Back to where I'm at now. Did you grow up in a military family, or what made you move around so much? Uh, just uh, yeah, my people's job. Okay. So yeah, I was moving around a lot, new schools all the time. What kind of family did you grow up in? Uh, single mom. Okay. Like two brothers. And so I had to be like the uh, I'm the oldest too. So. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of had to be the parent in some ways, or like step yeah. up into a role. Yeah, I had to take care of the house and just yeah, typical, you know. So what was that like? Um, I feel like it taught me a lot, like made me grow up quick. It's taught me a lot of skills. It just made me know that I got to have my own back. Cause a lot of people grow up babies, so they don't really, um, got the skill. Like they don't have that drive that I feel like I got from like not having it. So do you feel like you've been fending for yourself, surviving for yourself for, since a young age? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say like surviving cause I grew up, like, decent, like, pretty good. Okay. So it's not like, I still got, like, everything I want for Christmas and shit like that, but not everything, but just for, like, uh, because there's only one mom, and I got two other brothers and more more siblings, too, so. Single parent. I was, I was alone a lot, so. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about a single single parent household is mom's out working, yeah. and then the, the kids are running crazy a lot of times. Yeah, 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 and I have to watch them, and then. So. So when I was a kid, what the, the crazy kids at my school were doing, they were, it was all the way from ding dong ditching, light, uh, lighting bags of shit on a porch, yeah. on yeah. fire, um, but all the way up to car hopping, garage hopping, if you're familiar with what that is, yeah. you know, running into cars yeah. and, and getting I'm, stuff, uh, lighting uh, Drano bombs, or not lighting it, but setting Drano bombs off in the middle of a pit. You know what Drano yeah. bombs are? Uh-uh. You mix, uh, this is probably going to be, you two's going to take me down for even explaining this. Let's just say it makes a big kaboom, but it's completely safe. It's not a real bomb. Yeah. Um, what kind of stuff were you up to as a kid? Um, I didn't really get in trouble too much, but um, I think the craziest shit I ever did that I can think of now is like uh, on like 4th of July, we had like a bunch of leftover fireworks. And um, like the day, it was like, this is like the 5th or maybe the day before. It wasn't on the, on the 4th of July. And um, one person, so we, it was like four of us, right? So one person would go up to the garage. Like, no, two people would go up to the garage and bang on the garage, right? And then one person <laughs> would ring the doorbell. And as soon as they opened the doorbell, I would like uh, light a firework and throw it inside their crib. And we would um, run. That's, that's <laughs> insane. No. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so like, were you a good kid for the most part? Were you, like, were you good in school? Like, how were you um, as a student? A student? I was a uh, decent, like... Like B's and C's. I didn't really like school. I feel like it was. Uh, I feel like all the way up until freshman year. After after freshman year, it's like all pointless. But you, like my mom seen, wouldn't let me have like terrible grades and shit. So I had like one A. And then as I got older in like high school, I had like B's and C's only. You seem like a kid that's smart, but you barely tried in school. Yeah, I don't. Cause the whole time I was in school, I was doing YouTube. So I was like, instead of like learning YouTube, I mean, instead of learning like. The shit in school, I was just on my phone, like, watching YouTube videos on, like, how to edit better and just get ideas and shit like that. Okay, so we're going to eventually get into your scam empire, your rap empire, but let's let's go to the origin story a little bit. Yeah. And also, like, just so the people can know back home, how much, you're wearing what, like, $300,000 worth of jewelry right now? Uh, probably more than that, like, 500 plus. That's insane. Yeah. Also, I thought it was bullshit when I first met him. I called Trax NYC's people out in New York, and they said, yeah, the guy's legit, so. No, they know. Yeah, so anyways, there's a, there's an absurd amount of jewelry in the room. We just went from to Bank of America. We got $10,000 on the table. Um, you were educating us in the scam world. But before we get to all of that, what was your what was uh, your first initiation into YouTube and what were you doing before you got into scamming? 
So, uh, growing up, I always played, like, hella sports. Mm. Track, basketball, football, all the above. And I was good at all of them. Football, I was A-team, uh, starting for offense and defense. Same with basketball. And then all the way up until, like, sophomore year, um, I started YouTube when I was, like, 15. So, I was doing that. And the reason I started YouTube, because I remember, like, I asked my mom for, like, a pair of shoes one time. She was like, no, can't get them. So, I was like, damn, I need to find, like, a way to make my own money. So then I started doing, I was playing 2K at the time. So then I started doing that. So you were recording, you were doing reaction videos or you were recording yourself no, no, no. doing I, video games? Yeah, I was just playing 2K. I was recording myself playing 2K. Well, at first I was doing like uh, like outfit videos and like show people how to make shoes on there. And then... Um, you, the can, you can make your own shoes. Yeah, on 2K, yeah. It was like oh, 2K... on uh, the video game. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It was like 2K14 or something like that. And that's, I started doing that. And at first it was just like... I was doing it just because it was, like, actually, like, genuinely fun, like, just to make videos. And I was editing it on the PlayStation 2 because they had it, like, a uh, share factory or some shit like that. And I was using that, editing the videos. and um, That's when you like, went by Flight Made Dev? Uh, Dev Take Flight. Dev Take Flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then um, I was doing 2K. And then, like, around, like, sophomore year, I don't know. This is, like, when 2K18 came out. Like, 2K17 that was, like, the last one I really enjoyed and was doing YouTube on. I won, like, some tournament on there. It was called, like, Mountain Dew and everything. Well, I cheated to win, but I still won. How did you cheat to win? Uh, I had people, like, pull up and throw me games. Like, basically get on there and lose on purpose. Okay. So yeah. did you pay them off or what did you do? No, nah, they was doing it to support. You just convinced him. Yeah, to support, yeah. So, you know, you, you like to find the, the way around things, it seems yeah, like. That's part of your brand. I feel like there's always an easier way to do something. You got to work smarter, not harder. I don't know. I come from the wrestling world where it's very obvious who won and who lost. And when yeah. you get your hand raised by the referee or you're in that cage and you get your hand raised, you know it's because you outworked the guy, you had a better strategy, you had more yeah. dog in you. Does any part of you like feel bad when you win the cheap way? Hell no. That's just that strategy, just me being smarter. Like, I mean, as long as you win it, I don't really care how. Okay, so to you, it's any means necessary. It doesn't have to be clean. It doesn't yeah. have to be with... So you what, what, what like, does the I, word yeah. honor mean to you? Honor, um, just being truthful with yourself. So if I do win, I'll tell you I cheated, but I still won. Okay, so you at least admit that you you uh, yeah. scam the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay, I every time. Okay, and then you began scamming around age fifteen, sixteen. Um, yeah. So I was doing um YouTube and. There was, like, so there's, like, different ranks on there. Like, you can go from, like, you can be a legend on there. And I was, like, acting like I was selling, like, high-ranked dice accounts, like, with all the badges and, like, 99 overall, like, Legend 5 accounts. And then um, I would just post them on there and people would buy them. And then I just block them. That so was when I was younger, though. So f would you say finessing has been a strong part of your entrepreneur entrepreneurial spirit? Yeah, I just feel like... Um, I'm really good at like, um, I can I know how to talk to people and just like get what I want. I guess. Are you I'm familiar? Just good. Are you familiar with the term social engineering? Yeah, that's what, that's what I was looking for. I'm good at that. Like real good at that. Okay, I'm picturing you as a kid reading like Forty Eight Laws of Power, and instead no. of looking at it as a cautionary tale and what to watch out for, you were like, "Oh, I'm actually going to implement this stuff." Yeah, I, I'm. I'm know some a little bit something about that, but I don't know. I was always like ahead of everybody. Like when I was in high school. Everybody else is, like, just, like, fucking off and, like, not doing shit. And, like, I remember getting there freshman year, I was, like, I either got to blow up on YouTube or something. Like, I, I was, like, I got four years left to make something work. So by the time I graduate, I'll be moved out or have something going. What does social engineering mean to you? Uh, Just the way you – I feel like it's the way you say things. So, like, do you know that – The way you go about things, like – Do you know that Bloomberg Business wrote an article about you? Bloomberg Business. On, on their cybersecurity staff wrote an article about you and another rapper. No. Nah. And they said they've reached out to Punch Made Dev for comment, but he did not respond. Really? Yeah. No, nah, I never seen They were him. talking about how you had explicit instructions on how to write a dump. Oh, is that what it's called again? Video. Yeah, you right. got a dump, yeah. Got, so, and a dump is a type of scam where you get a, a fake stolen identity yeah. credit card information, debit card information. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, and you have your song. Your song doesn't just dip its toes into the game. Like you literally give people one that in a way that rhymes. You give them yeah. a step by step of how to do what you do. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you searched hard enough, you'll really find that on the internet already. So mm -hmm. I just 
I just kind of put it into a song. Just educate people. You know, I don't really do any of that. So one moral dilemma I've experienced on this channel is, uh, like when we put out the Kia Boy video, to yeah. me it was, I wanted to highlight something that was happening in my town that was absolutely crazy that I couldn't believe was happening. Yeah. And in the process of doing that, if you look at certain cities, since that video has been posted, there's been spikes in different cities of yeah. increased Kia Boys. And I had no ideas nor intentions that people... Teenagers would begin to steal cars because they may have seen a YouTube video from me. Yeah. Like that to me is the opposite impact that I'm looking to have. Yeah, My question is, is, what do you think about your impact? Actually, uh, I actually don't like it for real. It'd be like kids hit me up in DMs. It'd be like, uh, you're my inspiration. Um, you really uh, motivated me to scam. But it's just like, I feel like what I put out more like my music is more just like having hustle and just not being just sitting there doing nothing, like wake up and do something like, Make money, like, better yourself. That's what I feel like I try to push, but okay, cause I don't I, want nobody scamming for real. Yeah, so because I, I, I run a, uh, I ran an entrepreneurship program for eighth grade kids in Milwaukee. And at the end of the program, I sat down with them at a lunch table and was talking to them, talk, asking about their plans for the summer. Yeah. And uh, one of the guys in his Instagram bio, his name is Punch Made Whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you know, you know about Punch Made Dev, and he's like, yeah, like I'm gonna scam a grandma. I'm like, oh god, and this nah, kid's 14. Bro. Yeah, nah. So please, can you give a message to this 14 year old kid that might watch this? Definitely shouldn't scam, but I will say, everybody who got rich definitely had to take a loophole or cheat the system a little bit. But I wouldn't scam. I we've also talked to gangster rappers around the country that have really, you know, we just talked to a guy in Baltimore or the. Uh, D.C. area that's went to federal prison for gun charges, drug charges. And his yeah. message to the youth is don't live the gangster lifestyle. It seems like most people that live, have lived the lifestyle allegedly would advise kids not to do it. Yeah, but then they'll get on there and uh, flex hella money and cars and shit. And, and yeah. $500,000 worth and of jewelry. Yeah. And it just makes them think. But you could do it either way, like other ways. There's somebody making way more money than me. In a, in a better way, I guess you could say. So we've hung out with your crew all day. Very enjoyable crew. We had a great time going around town. You're showing us different scams. And like, honestly, on the drive here, I didn't know what to expect. Like, part yeah. of me was a little nervous. Like, is this guy crazy? Is this guy going <laughs> to steal my credit card? Is he a bad person? I think you're a likable person. Yeah. Um, I guess, let's go back to like the morality of it. Because what I heard a lot from your group is like, well, the government scams us out of stuff all the time. Our politicians yeah. scam us. These corporations run the scam. Like yeah. all these lawyers and the legal system is a scam. Yeah. Us taking a little bit of money that the bank is going to eat the cost, not the individual. Yeah. What's the big deal? Can you talk me more through that mentality? I mean, I feel like everything in the world is a scam. Like maybe not necessarily a scam, but there's always somebody that's going to have like a, the winning side of it. So I feel like... Um, I mean, yeah, the government scams too, just taxes and everything. Like, they print money, so I don't know why they need it. Or, do you think know. taxation is theft? Do you think taxation? Do you think the fact that we have to pay 20, 30% of our money to the government, do you think that is theft? I think so. I mean, I guess we do have to pay taxes for like hospitals and police and shit, but they'd be scamming anyway too. Yeah, there's certain things that I'm okay. Like, if, you, if we have smooth roads and our people are taken care of and people that are yeah. less fortunate have health care. Like if our money is being spent properly, I don't care about taxes yeah. that much. But when we know that the government is filled with people that are lying and yeah. corrupt. It's, yeah. Actually the police actually took like all my guns from me. They took a bunch of money from me and never got it back. And I've been wrongfully arrested before a lot. It's they, funny. They it's I never funny from no you hearing wrongfully arrested, <laughs> but tell me more about that. Um, I was literally in crutches in a uh, in a boot, and I was at a basketball court, and um, we was just hoop like so. I was visiting somebody out of town, like somebody in uh where I used to live, in one of the places I used to live, and they was hooping. I get, like they were just talking shit, whatever, just typical hoop shit, right? And I'm on the sidelines because I'm not gonna just sit in his house while he's not there, so I'm just chilling on the sidelines, just chilling with everybody. Then I had I was charging my phone in the sidelines, like on like a little pillar. And then when I went over there to go pick my charger up, like some like white boy grabbed the ball and he was like, let me get that. I don't want you stealing my ball. Like on some like racist shit. And then we were just arguing and we left. And then like I came to the same court like three weeks later 
And out of nowhere, like two big ass fucking like cop Tahoe cars started driving uh like towards the court. And this whole time I'm still in crutches and everything. And like, and I was like, damn, they uh let me walk over here just in case they're coming for me. Like, as a joke. And then like I'm walking towards like the bathroom and they actually hopped out the car and started jogging towards me. And then some nigga that I know since like middle school. Uh, pointed at me, said it was him. It was him. I didn't joke. even do anything. No, not even as a joke. He was like actually scared. I didn't even do anything. He just pointed at me. He was like, it was him. It was him. What the fuck is? Me? What did I do? And then they was like, uh, they put my hands behind my back, and I wouldn't even resist or anything. I have because I'm just confused. They're like, stop resisting, stop resisting, and they just asked me a bunch of questions. Then they let me go. So they let me go because I didn't do anything. So they let me go, and then like two, uh, like a couple of days later, they literally put it. They put it on the news. And they gave me like a, a warrant. And they said it was like for like my bail. They said my bond at forty k. And they put me on the news and said like I was on the run for like a, a fucking aggravated robbery. So they let me go and then did that and then put me on the news and like try to do that. Like I had people like I known like that I used to hoop with and like their family members and, and parents was like calling me like I just seen you on the news. Like are you okay? Like in trouble and shit. So they did me wrong. Okay. And so have you had many run-ins with police besides that? Nah, I really, I don't really get in trouble for. I mean, I've been pulled over, and um, I had my legal gun taken from me, and they never gave it back either. But uh, just speeding. But other than that, nah, not for real. I don't really get in trouble. A lot of rappers, I feel like, are not on. They're not aware of the legal gun situation that yeah. that them and their crew can be perfectly legal as long as they're not felons. They can pack, yeah. and a lot of them need that. I mean, I feel like yeah. you know you want you want to feel protected, and it's one of our rights as an American. Yeah. Why do you think so many rappers seem to be unaware of their right as an American to own a gun? I just feel like um, I feel like they know they can own a gun, but by the time they do, they already have felonies or or a bad record. So, or they just be too lazy. It's just simple. Like, there's even people I know. They're just too lazy to just take, like, one day out of their time to just go get, a like, a fucking concealed carry. Like, I got mine in a couple states, so I can carry mine. Well, some some concealed carries only work in, like, some of their states. So I got some. So, like, mine works for for the majority of places I can get it. Like, I can't get it in, like, New York or shit like that. But I would never, like, even ever leave the house without it. I don't even feel comfortable without it. Do you feel like there's a target on your back? Because in a lot yeah. of your rap songs, it makes it sound like... It's not a comfortable experience for you to hit the town and go outside and nah, be seen it's in not, public. It's not. I definitely have a target on my back. I've been, uh, I've been shot at before. I have some crazy shit happen. Yeah. Yeah. Are you able to go into details on what happened or what went down with that story? Uh, yeah. It was just like a music video shoot and just like people I guess I was with, I was with some people that yeah they just put I was with some people that didn't like those people type shit. Was that in this town? Uh, just somewhere. And I'll say another time too. Um. Somebody had actually tried to rob me at an ATM one time, mm. like super late at night, and I had to defend myself as well. And how did that go? Um, like how? Like, like did you have to? Like what happened? So did they? What happened? They tried. Oh, so no, I was I was at the ATM and I was just pulling money out, and it was like late as hell at night. And like uh, I usually take pictures like in front of the ATM, like with mask on and shit like this, and like gloves on. So I'm not really thinking. Then, so we pull up. I'm about to just, like get some money out. Then I hear somebody like creeping around the corner, and I'm thinking like, and, and, like where I was at, there's a lot of junkies there and shit. So I'm just thinking it's one of them. Like, but I hear somebody walking, so like, I was, so I, I, I was with somebody. I look at him like this, like as a joke. Like, let me see what that is. And I look around the corner, and it was literally like a nigga with like dreads, mask, gloves, like hoodie, everything. I was just staring at him like it's probably like distance like from him. And I was like, uh, we were just looking. And I was like, what's up? He was like, what's up? And he tried to grab me. But, like, it was like he was kind of, like, hesitant, like, kind of scared because I was, like, way bigger than this nigga. I'm, like, 6'5", so. We try, he, it's like he tried to grab me, but he didn't really try to. He did that. I back up. And like, I pulled my shit out. I was like, the hell? And then as soon as I do that and pull it out and just look at him, then another nigga comes flying around the corner with, like, a fucking, like, M16, like this. And then as soon as I seen that, I said, what the fuck? Went like this and just defend myself and left. But my fucking, uh. My you have this in a rap song, don't you? I do actually. It's called Punch Story, but it's, it's completely self defense. So and it was on camera, so I have nothing now. So did you did, did you, the police come and you had to explain and they saw the cameras um, and they let you go? Uh, uh, I just called and placed a report, and they really do nothing after that. They didn't really care. No one really investigated the shooting. Mm mm. They just wanted to ask me. You know how the cops work. They wanted me like go down there and like flip it on me, like as if I'm doing something wrong, but I wasn't. Complete self defense. It's on camera, so I I was like, bro, there's nothing really for me to come talk to about. Just go look at the camera. Do you have a copy of that? 
Huh? Do you have a copy of that video? No, nah, I don't. Okay. I was okay. going to get the video, but I didn't want to like push the buttons on the situation. Like I just wanted to just go away. Mm. So, okay. I don't know. Have you ever heard people refer to you as in the same category as Takashi 6 9 and Little Mabu? Uh, maybe not 6 9 but Little Mabu, yeah. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's cool. I think uh, Mabu is very smart marketing. And I feel like he's just himself. Like, he's not scared. Like, everybody, for some reason, want to just be tough and, uh, like, act like... They think that you have to, like, come from the hood to, like, be, like, a good rapper. Like, I ain't come from the hood, but... I didn't have like everything either, so it's not like I I, I didn't have no handouts. Like I didn't just start off with like fucking a hundred thousand dollars in my bank account. I still had to grind up like everybody else. And I feel like I don't know. As long as you're yourself, everybody want to fit in so bad. You think there's a lot of uh, followers in the rap world right now? Like oh, yeah. A lot of copycats, a yeah. lot of imitations. Yeah, but that's why they won't really get nowhere. And I, I started when I started like really being myself and saying whatever. That's when I started really going up. So. From what I understand, you've had to restart your career, your rap career, yeah. two or three times. Yeah, like three times. So first I started uh, YouTube, and then that's when I was doing like 2K videos, right? So I was, it was 2K17, I played that game. Then 2K18 came out. I played like a like a, maybe a month or two of that. That shit was like, it was ass. Like the game was terrible. So I was like, there's literally no way I'm going to finish out a whole nother year of this. So I, like, I got to do something else. So that's when I just started rapping, and I started posting as Dev Take Flight. And then I had a song that um, actually went like super viral. Like it was like the biggest song on TikTok for a second. It was this one like Addison Ray and Charlie and all them was doing, it. and they did dances to the song too. Is it, do you find it amazing that some people became the most followed people in the world on TikTok for doing like yes, not even that good of dances? Yeah, just random shit. Yeah, it's crazy. The internet's crazy. But yeah, um, what I was that. that song that blew up? I don't know if I've ever heard your. Oh, it was called, it was called Track Me. Okay. She's a runner. No, no, I'm thinking she's a runner. No, no, she's no, a track no, no. star. Not okay, not one. that. Okay. No. So, and how old were you when you got that viral hit? Uh, 17. Okay. 17, so, yeah. And what happened next? So, uh, then I had signed a deal, a fucked up deal, and then that shit went left. Are most rap deals fucked up? Because yeah, my impression is that, well, tell the people the, the behind the scenes of the rap world. When they're offering you a deal, what does the average person not know about that? Uh, it's just or what's a, in that contract that people should know? It's just a loan. But, like, I guess it's better than a loan because you have to pay it back, but you don't have to make payments. Like, say somebody signed me, well, they want to sign me for, like, a million dollars. It's just, like, an advance of a million dollars. Like, I have to pay it back, but, like, through my music. So they'll get a percentage of your streams. They'll get a percentage yeah. of the concerts. They'll get a percentage of the merch yeah. until everything's paid back. So, yeah, basically here's how it works. So if you want to sign, if I wanted to sign somebody for a million and I'm a label, they will have the million up front. Then they would have a marketing budget as well that I got to put the money into them. And a lot of the times it works like, so you got that advance, right? You're not going to get paid off your streams until you make that advance back. So they're getting 100% of everything until they make it back. So that's why a lot of rappers like get the advance and then go broke because they don't, they never had money before. So they blow it all. And then that's when they get desperate and become like a slave to the label. Wow. And then I can also imagine that so they go on a spending rampage. They've had more money than they've ever had in their yes, life. Bro. They're buying bling. They're buying buying cars. And if yeah. you're buying bling cars and houses, a million dollars is not a lot of money at it's all. Not, it's Especially not. if it's a, you know, you're living a nice lifestyle. Yeah, and they don't think about the future. And then all of their streams of income are cut off because the label gets it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So they only living off that advance and they blow it all trying to keep up with the image. And that's when they get desperate and that's when they do whatever. That's when the label makes them do whatever they want. Because they got to pay that back. Hmm. So I have a couple of friends that are rappers and I get scared. Like when I see them go to Johnny Danes for the second or the third time, I'm like, yeah. dude. Yeah, you need to chill. Definitely. Get, like you can get investment properties. You can go to the mutual funds. There's that a lot of ways to make money and have longevity. Because I feel like if someone gets a chunk of cash, let's say $500,000, yeah. a smart person can probably parlay that for the rest of their life into something yeah. else. I but, feel like, yeah, they don't know, though. Like, a lot of people, because a lot of rappers just come from nothing, and their their, their family doesn't know anything about money. Their uh, grandparents, no nobody in their family, everybody in their family is broke and doesn't know anything about managing money. Like, Or they'll just work a re They only know about working a regular job. Like, my family, nobody in my family is, like, entrepreneurs or anything but me. So it's like, I don't have nobody I can ask and be like, uh, should I invest in this property, do this, or what should I do with this and that? Because everybody I know just work regular jobs. So that's where it comes from. It's laughable how bad 
most people's financial knowledge is. And part of it is it's t- like there's nothing in the school. Like you should know how to balance a budget. You should know how to take out a loan. You should know how to buy your first house. Yeah. You should know how to balance a checkbook before you ever leave high school. And it is, for some reason, it's never covered. I don't know if it's yeah. a, a conspiracy designed to keep us in the system oh, or just is, an bro. outdated curriculum. Yeah, it is. It's just like uh, people want to learn what I do, but I can't teach them what to do what I do. It'll burn out. It's like... Um, if everybody's rich, then there is no rich people. So they definitely want to keep people at the bottom. Like, if you have a company, not everybody can try to be the CEO like you or you won't have no workers. So the people at the top just try to keep everybody down. So you think it is a design conspiracy? Like, hey, we're not going to teach people about credit cards. We're going to let them yeah. run up a limit. Yeah, we're not yeah, going to yeah. teach them about living below their means. We're going to let them get into debt. You think that's yeah. a coordinated effort from the top, from the elite, so to speak? A hundred percent. Just like uh, there's definitely like a cure for cancer, but... If they actually release that, then that would be so much money that's gone for them. So I think one thing we're growing up in in our generation is an ultimate distrust of our institutions, whether it be religion or government, any of the authority. I think we've been lied to for so long that we're kind of turning our back on it and we're entering this new era that's kind of scary. That's the era of misinformation. We have no idea what is real anymore. Yeah, I mean, me, I'm a strong believer of, like, the Bible and God. Are you really? I really am. Have you read the book? And read, yeah, I have. Have I, you read all the commandments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I definitely, I wouldn't say I'm perfect. I still sin, but... um, We just stole from Domino's Pizza about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> nah, a lot of people wouldn't think so, but I actually do. When I actually started, like, praying every day and actually believing in God, that's when, like like, everything started working for me. So you think Jesus Christ and God are chilling up in heaven? They're like... Punch made dev. You're, you're making great decisions out there in the world. Uh, not everything. I don't think everybody makes perfect decisions, but I feel like I do help everybody, like everybody around me. I feel like I do help a lot of people and I'm a, a good person. It, I mean, I make money the way I do, but I do bless the people around me. Hmm. So that's kind of the thing is um, we were comparing you to kind of a a Robin Hood of the era. Yeah. Kind of like a, what was the villain we were talking about too? Like what, what was the version we talked Oh, you're the... You're like the um, the Mr. Beast of the streets, kind of. <laughs> Mr. Beast of the streets? Mr. Beach of, the Mr. Beast of scamming. That's kind yeah. of how we were comparing Mr. Beast? It. Yeah. What do you think about that comparison? Uh, Yeah, kind of. Like, I do want to do more shit, like, give back for sure. Because it just feels good. I mean, there's a lot of... I do give back a lot of times just to random strangers, and I just, I just don't post it, though. I don't, ain't really no point. So, the impression I'm getting from a lot of folks is... If you steal from a Walmart, a McDonald's, a massive corporation, yeah. but not from the individual, there's not much of a a moral conundrum here. There's not much of a, like, no bad feelings attached to it because, yeah. well, F them, they're the big company. They can they can eat it, and they've been stealing from us. Is that kind of the feeling that, does that sum up, sum up your thinking a little bit? Um, I mean, I feel like, yeah, I feel like people who do scam, they do, like, they feel like, take her from banks they ain't really hurt nobody because the bank got hella money and and when they do take it I, they get it back so i guess they really really care hmm so we're this is going to be all allegedly but yeah. what were the what are some of the biggest scams you know of that people oh, yeah. are pulling um wires and that's never going anywhere you got checks too i can give it like for the level like the bottom will be like cc's like with credit cards, like just use somebody's car for some petty shit like Domino's or food like that. We had sausage pizza <coughs> about 30 minutes before this podcast. <coughs> then we got uh, Ubers and um, shit like that. Then I guess next level from that would be um, uh, dumps, go in the store and get like a bunch of merchandise, phones. People will get like somebody's credit line, have somebody run in and get a bunch of phones, they'll sell them that way. Same with like PS4s and shit. Sell them half off to like a big ass like uh like a big ass like electronics like store or whatever. Then um above that I would say checks. Depending on I've seen people bust like big ass checks like hundred k plus like if you got the right account. But like for the walk most out of a bank with a hundred k cash. Yeah, but I feel like the mo- for the most part people do like more around like the five to ten k range. It just depends on like the age of the account and like the activity in the account like. You can't just have an account that's got like you're only pulling in like eight hundred dollars profit a month and then just randomly try to drop fifty k in there. It's not gonna work. Then um, above that though, the biggest one I would say right now that I know of is just wires. Like I know I know somebody who would just he literally he punched a B and B 
And like So he got a free Airbnb in Somebody else's name In Miami Like a top penthouse At the top Then He he literally sits at the top Opens up his laptop Busts like a wire For $30,000 Makes 30k at the top Just closes his laptop And just leaves Doesn't even sleep there this is crazy like that. Like people really work so hard and there's just somebody like that that just go to the top and just So that he gets a penthouse, he logs into a laptop, yes. does a wire for thirty thousand and At then the top, leaves. Literally just closes that shit and leaves like nothing. And why does he leave? Why doesn't he enjoy the penthouse? I guess he's on to the next or something. Just to say that he's he gonna spend it? that money. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. It's free, so to him. Hmm. I feel like that's different than our parents and grandparents' generation. I feel like our grandparents would not have had well, obviously there was there was no scam rock and rollist. Like there was no one that was um, promoting that stuff and becoming famous. Like I feel like yeah. people would have been really upset. But scam rap is a real popular subculture of the rap world right now. Yeah, I think so too. Why do you think that is? I think because uh, it really started with EDD um, when it was like that California EDD and everybody was doing that. What is EDD? Uh, unemployment. So people were just following. That was during the COVID era? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's what made it really popular because it was always been a thing. But the fucking um, unemployment is what really like when people like people who don't even know nothing about scamming was just coming up like because it was easy. All you had to do was get somebody's info and it's for like a free like 20 bands. So I think that's what made it big because everybody was doing it and everybody was just intrigued by it. Everybody wants money. So. So how can you be so blatant? Like you literally have multiple songs that have unspeakable lyrics or like yeah. illegal or uh Lyrics that are like illegal sounding and sketchy. How are you able to do that without fear of like anything happening to you? Uh, because I'm innocent. I don't do anything. It's just educational <laughs> reason. I'm just I just know a lot about it. I'm just a researcher. So it seems like with a, a rap music video, as long as you say it's props or a recreation, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're not doing really doing it behind the scenes. Mm. Like some people will go in there and say the guns are proper and everything, but if you're really shooting and killing that people, the video ain't gonna really help nothing. So or saying it's props not gonna help anything. Let's go to the back to the the first time you had to restart your rap career. So you got yeah. you got roped into a deal. Yep. What went, happened next? It went bad, and I ended up having to change my name. <laughs> and then, um, so that's when I went by Ob and Dev, and then I started. What did OBM stand for? Uh, one boss nigga. Okay. Yeah. Um. After that, same shit happened. Another deal was ass, and I actually lost my my Instagram got deleted, my Twitter, my TikTok, and YouTube, all at once. So I literally lost everything. How did that happen, or what was the reason that happened? Uh, like they just got taken down, like for guidelines and shit. Were you rapping about scam stuff at that time? Yeah, I was, but that's not why I got taken down. It was just like, there was like a loophole in the system on Instagram. You could ban anybody's shit. So someone that didn't like you got you banned? Yeah. So how does that happen? Um, I was just ways, loopholes, everything. It's kind of like, it kind of died down now, but at the time, like everybody was getting deleted. But yeah, I lost everything. TikTok. So I literally one day had everything. And the next day I lost everything. Instagram. Um, YouTube Try to start like Completely fresh from zero That's, It was terrible So what was going through your mind Because Building up a following Building up a, a Loyal audience yeah. Can take years and years Of hard work Yeah That got wiped away from you What were you feeling That morning when you woke up And everything was gone I just wanted to quit It was terrible It just felt like the world was ending Did you get depressed at all? Uh, nah Because I've lost like Hella shit before So it's just like I mean, you'll, you'll be not in a good mood, but I wouldn't say, like, depressed. Like, I knew I had to, I knew I was going to, like, do it again, but it's just ass for, like, I'll take, like, a week off to just, to just mope around, and after that, I'll get active. So, would you say, what would you say your strongest characteristics are? Um, What makes you good? Like, like, resilience is one of the things I'm hearing right now. I just, yeah, I don't take no for an answer. Like, it's my third or fourth time doing everything over again. I feel like the only person that can stop you is you. No matter what, I'm going to do it again, over and over again. So that first label deal, how did that end? Um, the first one, lost everything with the uh, Dev Take Flight name. And the second one, got banned and lost everything with that one. So then I had to start over completely everything from zero. And that's, well, I'm punching my Dev now. Okay, and would you? what would it take for your sign to a label at this point? 
Nothing. I would never sign. It's all always fun. independent. Yeah, always independent. It's all it's all scams anyway. I feel like if you make money like outside of rap, like it'll be a good deal for like somebody who doesn't like have money or not making money outside of music. So like a good like million dollar advance would be good. But if you're making money outside, there's no point because the labels all they do is just get you videos, um, get you features and shit like that. And if you can pay for that yourself in studio time, then there ain't no point. I record at home and shit, so I don't even need nobody help. Do you mix and master yourself? Yeah, I do. Really? Yeah, I do everything. I used to make all my beats too, but I kind of just started using other people's beats for different sounds. So that's another similarity I, I've, uh, so I see you, um, between you and Certified Trapper is yeah. you guys control a lot of your elements of production. Yeah. It's yeah. in-house. Yeah, in-house. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so the only reason, the only way you think it makes sense to sign a deal is if you start out, if you don't have a lot of cash. And yeah, you need and to, if you don't know what you're doing, like... If you don't know how to market yourself, then there's uh then you need to sign. But if you know how to market yourself, like there's no reason to sign. Like I feel like me, there's really no reason to sign. There's nothing that a label could do for me that I can't already do other than just connect me with like the machines, like doing a Spotify playlist and shit. And industry shit like content. Yeah, industry. But I don't even want to be that big for real. I don't want to be like super big, like mainstream. I kind of just want to be at like the top of underground or like stay like I like the steady pace I'm moving at. So almost like an underground, like a Zilla comedy guy where you can sh- sell out shows, but you're yeah. not played on the radio every single day. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I just like just move at my rate. Do so were you signed with a big label? Yeah, I was. Did they give you any sort of advice? Hey, here's how you should handle your finances. Here's how you should market. Uh, hey, I saw you spend, you know, a hundred racks at the jewelry store. I would I would be careful about that. Like, was there any sort of advice or counseling that they gave to rappers? Nah, like, because when I did sign, I didn't. Re- they didn't really do anything. Like, when the first the first deal I had, all they did, well, they were just flying me out and just doing these like expensive ass music videos and shit like that. And it feels like they're paying for it, but really, you're paying for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They make it seem like they're like fucking um, like they're paying for it and doing it for you. Do you know how much a music video would run? It depends on who you want to shoot with. But, like, the industry people was charged, like, 5 to 10K. You think that's In, f- fair for a good music video? No. I I get it done for much cheaper. So, what it really comes down to is how good of a businessman are you? How much of it can you run your own show? And if you can build your yeah. own contacts, if you can build your own team, you're going to be much more efficient and yeah. mobile than if you sign to a label. Yeah. You got to just be organized. I feel like a lot of people... They didn't grow up with, like, laptops and, and, like, technology like me. So it's, like, they don't know how to... Some people don't even know how to put their, like, music on Apple Music or anything like that. Or, like, some dumbasses don't even know how to, like, upload their fucking music video to YouTube. Shit like that. So them type of people need labels. like. Mm. So, because I, I, I heard um, someone recently, um, they're working on so-and-so's project. And they're like, yeah. oh, we probably have 18 to 20 people working on his project. I'm like, doing, crazy. doing what? <laughs> nah, there's no what, reason to be What to- work is there for 18 to 20 people for releasing music? There's not. I don't know. They just be getting, they'll like just throw hella shit on there so they can run up your marketing budget and you got to owe them more. Ah, so so if there's 20 people on the payroll, that yeah. that's all coming out of the advance. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I remember the deal I had at first, like I had like a manager that I known at first, like when I was my first ever deal. And they tried to like, I was young as hell. So they told me I couldn't uh, have that manager. And they gave me a manager that was inside the label. So they completely control and finesse everything. So they funnel the money back into them too. Yeah, yeah. And then even the, even the manager that I have wouldn't be in my best interest. They wanted it to be in their best interest. Are labels evil? Uh, yeah, they are, for sure. And do you think most rappers are being taken advantage of? All of them. All Not of them? Not most, all of them. Unless you're, unless you're like somebody huge. Like like Drake huge. and Little Baby. Is oh, it, yeah, they're, is it they're, good for them to be signed? Yeah, they're doing their own deals. Like, they go in there and tell you. They're actually popping and stuff, so yeah. They're doing good. Do deals. they basically, they create their own label at some point. Yeah. It's not really, it's like they're not letting Columbia. They call the shots, like, yeah. But little people, like. If you're not like a top five like artist or top ten, you're all getting fucked over. So I've been doing a lot of listening to your music. Some of it is absolutely outrageous. Some of yeah. it makes me laugh. Yeah. Some of it made me a little wary of even meeting you in the first place because it was really crazy. Yeah. What happened in Buffalo? In Buffalo? Uh it was that shooting in the grocery store, huh? I think so. You you had a shootout in a grocery store? No, Buffalo? no, no, not me, no. 
Buffalo was like, uh, you don't remember that? That person who went on like Twitch live or something like that, he went in there and shot the whole story up. That's what it was a reference to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have never died in Buffalo. I, I, I would have brought the gun inside. I said something like that. Ah, so I was yeah. saying if you were there on hand, you would have been there to Yeah, help I would have I would conceal carry, yeah. Do you think our country is better off when more people are concealed carrying? Yeah. And I feel like people who think like they should take guns away is like stupid because if they take the guns away, then the only people who have guns is just coons, like people who are not supposed to have them. When you say coons, who are you referring to? Uh, coons, it could be. I thought coons was a black term. Yeah, no, it is. But it and we be, have we have a lot of black guys standing right around us right now. <laughs> nah, for me, a coon is somebody <laughs> who uh, doesn't follow no rules, stand on the block all day with no money, smoke blacks, and just shoot at people all day and just. Don't have nothing going good. Just a, so just basically, a coon. like an ignorant gangster. Yeah, like an ignorant like coon. Like just don't like being around. Like get the fuck out the way. His words, not mine. <laughs> a fucking coon. <laughs> I hate coons. I thought you were gonna say the guns would only be in the hands of the government, and nah. that's what would be scary. Nah, it would be. It would just be coons who got it. So then, if I if I was a coon and I wanted to rob you. You wouldn't, you couldn't legally have. I, w- I would know that you don't have a gun because you're a law abiding citizen. I'll take everything. So basically, when there's gangster ass dudes that have guns illegally, those are the only guys that are going to benefit from strict gun laws. Yeah, like people in like uh, New York and L. A. Only people who got guns out there is the coons. We're gonna have to bleep this word so we don't commit a hate crime on oh, this damn. video. <laughs> My bad. I use a different term. <laughs> and it, don't don't make it start with the N either. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> but uh, but I agree. I mean. I've never owned a gun in my life, but I'm at a point right now with where I live in Milwaukee yeah. and having a baby on the way. Yeah, congratulations. We are, thank you. It's, it's a beautiful thing I'm really excited about, but it's also yeah. a little scary. I don't want to live in a place where I even think like I need a gun, but people are going so reckless and yeah. doing things that are so, they don't care who they, they'll, they'll hit a house and they don't even know who's in there or they'll accidentally smoke a kid that's, you know, studying in their room or they'll, we had a, a break in three doors down in the middle of the day in summer in a, in yeah. a to me, it just... I've people. seen some crazy shit, yeah. I've seen somebody, like, somebody down here, like, got shot in the middle of our mall, like, inside the mall. Like, we only have one mall, too, so it's pretty crazy, like, even... What do you think saying. is contributing? It's not just the recklessness of society, but it's, like, people care less about each other. And yeah. people don't have empathy for each other, and they don't have any sort of idea that, hey, if I take uh, this guy out, his mom's going to really be sad, and his grandma's going to be sad, and, yeah. and he might have a kid that he has to take care of. Like, there's no yeah. understanding of the consequences of what can happen when you do something that reckless. Why do you think that is? Why do you think we're getting into this really scary place as a country? I think uh, it's because of the internet, and people, like, want to seem cool on the internet or fit in or don't want to look like a, like a bitch or something, so... They just want to, like, I don't know. They feel like their image means everything. So, like, you'll, it all always starts over words. Like, over uh, petty it's things. just, yeah, it's just like the, the clout, like, other people's opinion is why everybody going crazy. So, do I have any part to play in this? Do you have any part to play in this? I mean, you have millions of views about scam rap. Yeah. I have millions of views that show some of the most gangster shit in the country. Yeah. Am I to blame? Nah, cause without the without the people doing it, then we wouldn't have no no content. Do you so think it's therefore, important? We're just broadcasting it. Do you think it's important to shed a light on what's going on though? Like for me to go boots on the ground and show um, this off to people, is that a benefit to society? You think a benefit? Um, I don't. I don't think so. I feel like we we just like people gonna. I feel like we just spread awareness and like make more people want to do it. I feel like for real, for real. So you were talking about image of a rapper and yeah. like doing petty stuff. We were with a gangster rapper that wouldn't even put his arm around his friend because he said that was too gay. Oh, yeah, he's just too fucking cool, bro. He's too. <laughs> Can you tough. imagine that? Not even being able to hug it's your so, friend because so lame. you have to be too much of a gangster rapper. No, that's absolutely lame. It's just it'd be shit like that. Like you're not that cool. Just be yourself. You're not that tough. It doesn't matter where you come from. Everybody can shoot a gun or do that. Why is it not cool to, like, be loving and friendly to, like, for a gangster rapper, to be yeah. loving and friendly to his male friends, to, to tell a dude, hey, man, I love you, or to give him a hug? Like, why, why is that not cool? Why is that soft to do that? I, I don't know. I guess they're just too, they're just too fucking cool. Like, I don't know. Mm. Like, why? I don't, I, I couldn't tell you. I was just been myself. 
I, I, but I do be around people who like try to act like super tough, some where I used to, and I've been around them before. It's just corny to me. It must be exhausting. Too. Yeah, just walking around acting mad and just me <laughs> mugging all day. Yeah. Um, your your crew told me to ask about afterpay. Oh, afterpay. What is that? Um, afterpay was like a a jug. It's dead now, but a jug. It, yeah, like a scam. Okay. So basically, <coughs> it was like um. It was an app that gave you like a credit limit. It would be anywhere from like a thousand to two thousand dollars, and you would just add like the Afterpay card to your Apple Pay, and then you just walk into the store, and then get whatever you. Want. It would be a certain select of stores on Afterpay, and I think the best one was probably Dicks. So you could go in there. And I knew people who was just going in there and just getting like Nike Techs, Forces, Unlimited Shoes, Kayaks, all that. And again, this is a scam that affects the corporation, the companies. Yeah, yeah. and those are like those are like waves. Like those are that shit that's not going to last forever. Like. It seems like a lot of these scams come and go. Like yeah, they there's PPP go. loan scam. There was yeah. an unemployment scam. There's like a glitch in the system. Yeah. People find a way to exploit it. And then the system recovers, especially a, a big system. It takes a while to, to notice it. But then once they patch it up, yeah. there's a new glitch that appears. Yeah. Like it, it, it's always going to be. That's why I like you got to stack and save. Like if you do scam, because I, I see a lot of people, they'll just run it up off one wave and then think it's going to last forever and they end up just going broke. Because it's not going to last forever. You always got to... There's always something new. But things that will last forever is like checks and like wires and stuff like that. It'll just be different ways of doing it. But things like after paying like certain apps, like they will lock it down and eventually it'll be damn near impossible or wait or too difficult for the little petty a thousand dollars or so. What do you want your legacy to be on the world, Punch May Dev? My legacy? I want people to just be hustlers and... Uh, embrace where they come from and not try to be so you don't have to be tough or or a gangster nowadays to be respected or be cool in the world would you, you say yourself. would you say you're respected yeah for sure because i feel like i'm just myself and even when i because i'm even though i'm from the suburbs i can still go to any hood or anywhere because i'm myself i'm not trying to be something i'm not but at the end of the day i'm not somebody who's just going to like back down and just let myself just get robbed or ass beat, but I'm just not out here sliding on ops or just uh, overplaying that tough role. Hmm. What is on your next? What What is on your horizon? Like, what do you want to happen in your rap career? What do you want to accomplish? Um. Right now, I'm just taking it like a a song and a video at the time. I just want to be at the top of underground and just keep pushing. I just want to have like a good fan base to where I can just tour the United States at least and just do tours and, and sell them out. Is there any random country that you're really popping in? Like I know in Spotify um, you can see like, oh, in Germany you got yeah, Actually, Nigeria. Nigeria? Yeah. Of scary. course it's Nigeria, dude. <laughs> yeah, Nigeria and then UK. A lot of UK people be uh, like following me too. Have you ever tried to pull a Nigerian print scam before? Nah, nah. That's not one of yours? Nah, or? I've heard about it though. Those are the, Those are the real big scammers. Nigerians are yeah they do them big wires and them big ones. So you've said you're the LeBron James of American scamming. Yeah. Uh, what other countries are known for like scamming? Big, yeah. Uh, Russia, uh, Nigeria. Um, that's really it. Do you ever plan that teaming up with and making it an international thing? <laughs> international scam? <laughs> nah, I plan on uh. Well, I don't scam now, but I plan on quitting, like even rapping about it and spreading the image. Okay. Hmm. Punch me, Dev. Do you have any final thoughts? Anything final that you like to talk to the people about while you while you're on this episode? Final thoughts. Um, I think that's everything. Just uh, stay tuned. I'm gonna have some. I got always got something up my sleeve. I would say if there's one thing to learn from this episode is that being a one of one character is immensely helpful for your personal brand nowadays. There's yeah. we're living in an era where there's a lot of copycats. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are. I saw this guy do it. Now I'm going to do it. And yeah. so if you can find a way to be truly yourself yeah. and stand out and be different, you're going to make a very long career because there's not, there's not another, if you're, if you're like every other games rapper, like I, I've seen it in, in different cities where like every music video looks the exact same. Bro, so annoying, bro. They just and they to, talk about the same shit. Yes, every the single same song. Bars too. You, so you've heard one song, you've heard them all. Yeah. If you can make a unique personality that can't be replaceable, you will have yeah. longevity in this game. Yeah, but I feel like the way business works with anything, uh, you find something that's working for somebody else, and then, like, 
add your own spice to it and make it way better. Like I feel like that's that's always what I did. So it's not like well, if you you shouldn't just straight copy somebody, but I feel like you should take inspiration from other people and make it like much better. Yeah, I mean, innovation is always borrowing on an idea and then making it better or making yeah. it your own. And so it's like if you're a cook in the kitchen, you have a bunch of spices. You yeah. may have seen someone cook with garlic and salt, but you're going to start to add yeah. some paprika or some cumin to the mix, and yeah. all of a sudden you have a different flavor coming out. Yeah, see, like, and then, like, what I'm what I'm about to do out here is, like, where I live now, <laughs> they have, like, good-ass, like, food trucks. And then um, I'm about to take that to another city, like, just replicate them fucking food trucks and take it to somewhere else and just do it out there. Maybe that's because we'll, we'll finish off. Is Where yeah. do you want to parlay your... Previously earned money and your yeah. rap career money. Where do you want to parlay that into? Um, I just want to. I don't really know, but I'm just getting my hands into all businesses until some take off. Like, I will rent out cars or do the food trucks or real estate. Those are the basics. But I want to do something that I like to do, like that I enjoy doing. I don't want to do nothing that I don't or I won't really succeed in. It doesn't matter how much money it makes, but I just got to find that that niche that I actually enjoy doing. That's the secret of life is find something you love doing. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, everything you just heard today is allegedly uh, occurring. And um, thank you for watching this episode. I'll see you next episode. Peace.